Have you ever wanted to build your very own 3D printer, but felt intimidated by the complexity of the build? Well, you're in luck, because I found the best Core XY 3D printer for absolute beginners. This is Simple Core Legacy. It's an inexpensive, easy to build Core XY 3D printer designed by Rolahan. I think a machine like this is perfect for someone who is just getting started with DIY 3D printing and wants an approachable and fun build without breaking the bank. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build your own. Before we start building, you will need to print all of the required parts. Thankfully, there aren't that many. Everything you need fits comfortably inside of this box right here. I chose to print mine out of ABS from Matter 3D, a local Canadian company, and I think they look fantastic. You don't need to use ABS though, PLA or PETG is just fine, as long as you aren't enclosing the printer. All the files you need to print are available on Rolahan's GitHub, and there's a link to that in the video description. The frame of a simple core is constructed from a total of 16 2020 aluminum extrusions. 4 verticals and 12 horizontals, 6 for X and 6 for Y. The length of them is up to you. You will also need 8 three-way corner brackets like these, as well as 6 of these right angle 2020 brackets. Finally, you need 4 rubber feet and of course the printed parts. For my build, I'm using 300mm extrusions for X, 350mm extrusions for Y, and 450mm extrusions for my verticals. That will give me 180mm of travel on X, 200 millimeters on Y, and around 220 millimeters on Z. Assembling the frame is easy, no drilling or tapping required. Just slide the extrusions onto the corners and tighten down the screws. I wouldn't recommend building a simple core with a build area larger than 300 by 300 millimeters, as the Core XY motion system doesn't scale up very well without some major modifications. Okay, as you can see here, we now have a nice little box, but we still need to attach the feet and the gantry extrusions. The feet are very simple. They screw onto the frame with two M5 by 10 bolts and T-nuts. The rubber feet themselves are attached with an M5 screw and an M5 nut. The exact length of the screw isn't critical, but it needs to be at least 16 millimeters long. Next up, we can install the extrusions for the gantry. Where exactly these extrusions need to be depends on the length of the linear rails that you're using for Z. In my case, I'm going to be using 300mm rails on Z, so the gantry extrusions need to be 300mm from the bottom of the frame. The easiest way to space them out is to use a couple of extra extrusions as a guide. The gantry extrusions attach to the rest of the frame using the right angle brackets that I showed earlier. I'm not going to lie to you guys, getting everything aligned here is tricky and will take some patience, but it's worth it to get everything square right now so that you don't have any problems later on. When all is said and done, the frame looks like this. In total, it's 340mm wide, 390mm deep, and 450mm tall, excluding the feet. This looks great, now we can move on to the Z-axis. The simple core uses a direct drive belted Z to move the bed up and down. To assemble the Z, you will need the three printed motor mounts, the three Z idlers, as well as the three bed mounts. I would highly recommend using Ein's modded bed mounts instead of the stock ones, as they have a tooth pattern that makes grabbing the belts easier. They also support both MGN12H and MGN9H linear rails. In addition to the printed parts, you will also need three NEMA 17 motors, some 9mm GT2 belt, three 9mm pulleys, and three 9mm toothed idlers and of course, the required screws and T-nuts. To start, we can install all of the 9mm pulleys on the stepper motor shafts. You'll need to play around with the exact position of them once you route the belts, but aligning them flush with the end of the shaft like I've got here is a good starting point. Now we can attach our Z-motors to each of the motor mounts with M3 by 8mm screws. You can also add the M5 by 10mm screws and T-nuts that we need to attach it to the frame. To assemble the idlers, you simply secure the toothed idler in place with an M5 by 30mm screw, careful not to tighten it too much. Then you can add the M5 by 10mm screws and T-nuts to secure it to the frame. Take care to align all of the motor mounts as precisely as possible here. The left and right motor mounts should be installed 20mm from the front of the frame, with the motors facing towards the back of the printer as shown here. I designed and printed a 20mm spacer to make sure I got this distance correct. 
the rear Z motor mount needs to be positioned in the exact center of the frame. It can be helpful to measure ahead of time and mark the extrusion with a pencil or a sharpie just to make sure it's aligned as accurately as possible. The Z idlers need to be installed directly above their respective motor mounts, and that way the Z rails will run perfectly straight. Next, we can install the Z rails and the bed mounts. The Z rails simply attach to the motor mounts at the bottom and the idlers at the top with M3 screws and a nut on the other side. The bed mounts bolt directly to the linear rail carriages. Leave these quite loose for now, as we still need to attach the Z-belts. In my opinion, routing the Z-belts is the trickiest part of the entire build. But, as long as you take your time, it's really not too bad. First, pull some of the 9mm belt through the bottom slots on the bed mount, and then tighten the bottom two screws to lock it in place. Then, route that belt down, around the motor pulley, and then up and around the idler at the top. From there, you can slide the belt through the top slot in the bed mount, pull it tight, and then tighten the top two screws to secure it. You can now cut off some of the excess belt, but make sure to leave enough that you can comfortably route this belt a second time. And here you can see what the finished belt loop should look like. Now that we've finished installing this belt, the next step is actually to remove it. It's very important that all of the Z belts are exactly the same length, so we're removing this one to use as a template to cut the other ones to the right size. Once you have three belts of exactly the same length, you can go ahead and route them all. Your belts likely won't be too tight at this stage, so it's a good idea to flip the printer over and slide the Z motors down until all the slack is out of the belts. You don't need to go crazy here, but just make sure that the belt won't slip on the pulley. All that's left to do now is to install the bed. The recommended way to attach the bed is to use two extra 2020 extrusions as a platform for the bed to sit on. These extrusions should be around 50 to 100 millimeters shorter than the ones you used on the frame. Okay, this is starting to look a lot more like a proper Z-axis. The bed can be attached to the frame with these printed mounts and a bit of VHB tape. I'm not going to be installing it until the end of the build though. This Z system works well for smaller beds, but doesn't handle large heavy beds nearly as well. If you're planning on using a larger bed, I would highly recommend trying out Ein's modded Z motor mounts with a 4 to 1 gear reduction. Those should stop your bed from falling. Okay, that's the Z-axis finished. Before we carry on with the gantry, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. You probably know PCBWay for their top tier PCB manufacturing services, but they also do so much more. I've used their 3D printing, laser cutting, and CNC machining services personally and can vouch for just how high quality they are. If you need parts for your simple core but don't have access to a 3D printer, PCBWay can hook you up with a wide range of materials and colors, perfect for any build. Whether you're an engineer or a hobbyist, PCBWay is a one-stop shop for turning your ideas into real, working prototypes. Check out PCBWay using my link below. As the name would suggest, the gantry of the simple core is quite simple. The Y-axis rails must be MGN9Hs, but the X-rail can be either an MGN12 or an MGN9. I'd recommend using a medium preload MGN12H rail on X, but the only spare rail I have right now is an MGN9, so I'll be using that. Do as I say, not as I do. First things first, we're going to be installing the Y-rails onto the gantry. To make sure the rails are centered on the extrusions, I'd recommend using the Voron rail alignment tools. Since my rails are 50mm shorter than my extrusions, I'm using these printed bumpers so the carriages don't accidentally come off the rails during assembly. Now that the rails are installed, we can work on the XY joints. The XY joints are composed of four pieces, two for the left and two for the right. You see here how one side of the XY joints has a 45 degree angle? That side should always face the back of the printer. Begin by attaching the bottom to the linear rail carriage with four M3x8 screws. Button head screws are required here, otherwise you risk the belts rubbing on the heads of the screws. Then you can attach the top part to the bottom with two M3x35mm screws. Be very careful here, as these screws just thread into plastic. Don't tighten them down until the end of the assembly, leave them loose for now. Next, we can install the toothed idler and the stack of F695 bearings. The toothed idler always goes on the rear, the side with the 45 degree angle, and the bearing stack goes on the front. Both of these are secured in place with an M5 by 35 mm screw. I would highly recommend putting a washer in between the F695 bearings on the front, as it gives a little bit more room for your belt. Don't tighten down these screws too much, you do want the bearings to spin freely. 
once everything is together, now you can go and tighten down those M3 by 35 screws on the side, and that's one XY joint done. The exact same steps apply to the one on the other side, toothed idler on the back and bearing stack on the front. Now that the XY joints are on, you can install the X-beam with four M5 by 10 bolts and T-nuts. Now let's install the A and B motors. For motors, I'm using LDO 2004 MAH motors. These were the motors I was originally going to use on my Trident, but I decided to save them for another project. They aren't the fastest motors out there, but a simple core isn't designed to break any speed records anyways, so they'll work out quite well. The motors attach to the motor mounts with four M3 by eight screws, and the motor mounts attach to the frame with three M5 by 10 screws, and of course, T-nuts. Also, make sure to attach the 20 tooth pulley to the stepper shaft before installing them on the printer. You'll need to adjust the exact height of the motors later when we run the belts. Next up, we need to install the idlers at the rear. The printed parts for the idlers aren't symmetrical, and the thicker side needs to be positioned towards the bottom. The idlers are attached to the frame with, you guessed it, M5 by 10 screws and T-nuts. From there, we can install the F695 bearing stacks, once again with a washer in between them. We use a long M5 screw to secure everything in place. This process is exactly the same for the other side. Make sure the bearing stacks are aligned with the toothed idlers on the XY joints. Now it's time to install the X-rail as well. The process is exactly the same as the Y-rails. Now we can finally route the belts for the gantry. SimpleCore tensions the belts at the tool head, so to start, we need to install at least part of it. SimpleCore Legacy uses the EVA tool head system, supporting both EVA 2 and EVA 3. I decided to try out EVA 3 for this build. In order to run the belts, the first thing we need to do is install the core, which is assembled from four parts, like you can see here on the EVA documentation. For your own build, take a look and see which tool head supports your desired hot end and extruder combination. Remember to check printables and thingiverse as well for user mods. This was my first time trying EVA 3, and I was surprised at the sheer number of heat set inserts it required. Okay, so we're gonna start at the back of the tool head. First, place your belt inside of the tensioner block and slide the block inside the tool head. Now you can secure it with an M5 bolt from the other side. You want to thread it in just enough that it stops you from pulling the tensioner out, but no more. We still need room to tension the belts later. From there, route the belt around the toothed idler on the XY joints and then through the idlers on the back of the frame. The belt goes through the XY joint and wraps around the pulley on the motor at the front. Make sure this pulley is level with the rest of the bearings and idlers on the gantry. If not, you can either slide the pulley on the stepper shaft or just move the whole motor mount up or down. After going around the motor, the belt goes around the bearing stack on the front of the XY joints and finally is secured on the tool head. On EVA 3, the belt loops through a hole in the main body before you can finally clamp it in place on the side of the tool head. Just like with the Z belts, it's crucial that our gantry belts are exactly the same length. Another fun thing to look at is how belt tension controls the skew of the gantry. You can see here that as I pull on the second belt, the whole gantry shifts quite significantly. Once the second belt is installed, the gantry should be straight. We can verify this by pushing it forwards towards the motor mounts. If it's not straight, you should see a noticeable gap between the gantry and the motor mount on one of the sides. If your gantry is racked, it's likely that you were off by one or two belt teeth when you were routing the belts, so just go back and adjust as needed. Once everything is straight, you can tension the belts by using the tensioners at the back of the tool head. As we saw earlier, the belt tension controls the skew of the gantry, so it's very important to tension both belts exactly the same. The way I do this is just by turning each tensioning screw the same number of rotations. Don't go too crazy with the belt tension though. SimpleCore lacks double shear support, so anything more than about two and a half pounds of tension could really damage the motors. Double shear would be a great user mod if anybody feels like designing something. With the belts ran and properly tensioned, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit before finishing off the tool head. The way you mount electronics on a simple core is entirely up to you, but I'll share exactly what I'm doing. This is a panel for the back of the machine, and I want to mount all of my electronics, except the power supply, to it. To attach the panel itself, I'm just using the generic Voron panel clips, and in the spirit of laziness, I'm gonna attach the mounts for the mainboard and Raspberry Pi using hot glue. Yes, I realize this sounds very jank, and it is, but it should be good enough. If you wanted to get fancy, you can experiment with DIN rails and other solutions, but I want something that's simple and also easily removable, because you can bet that I have some upgrades planned for this machine later. 
Rolahan includes a mount to attach the power supply to the bottom of the frame, so that's what I'll be using. I am absolutely not qualified to teach anybody to wire up a printer, so that's as much of the electronics as I'm going to be showing here. If you're looking for more information on wiring, the Voron documentation for electronics is quite thorough, but please exercise caution when wiring, especially when you're dealing with mains power. All that's left to do now is to finish off the tool head, and then that's the physical assembly complete. I'm using a Rapido and a full-size Bontec LGX on my build, which is a bit of a strange combo, I know. But I've had these laying around since I took Phoenix apart, and SimpleCore is a great excuse to give them a new home. The hot end slides into place on the front and is secured via the sides. The LGX mounts to this top plate here and can be placed on top. Make sure you cut an appropriate length of PTFE tube to go in between the extruder and hot end before installing it though. The hot end is currently configured as a Rapido UHF, but I'm going to be removing the UHF nut once I have the printer on. I just can't remove it until after I heat up the hot end. On the rear of the tool head, I'm using this modded fan mount to save space. Otherwise, the fan would run into the belt at the back of the printer. As always, I'll have a link to that part in the description. We can attach our bed probe. I'm using the BL Touch clone that I bought for my Ender 3 competition with Tommy. Finally, we can attach the hot end fan to finish off the physical assembly. Well, there you have it folks. That's the whole mechanical assembly of a simple core. Now, I know that the physical assembly is only half the battle, especially if you're a beginner and unfamiliar with wiring and configuring Clipper. If you made it this far, I'm assuming that you're interested in building a simple core of your own, so I do have a question for you. Would you be interested in a dedicated video on how to set up a printer with Clipper? I'm not talking about just installing Clipper, because there are a million videos on that already, but actually going from a fresh Clipper install and installing macros, configuring Z-Tilt, tuning sensorless homing, that kind of thing. Please let me know if you'd be interested in a follow-up video going through that process, because I think it could be helpful for a lot of people. Finally, if you want to build your own simple core, I'd highly recommend joining Rolahan's Discord server. It's a great place to learn more about building your own printer. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.